Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello everyone, long time no see. So I've been super busy for the past month and haven't really got the time to sit down and discuss the Dharma with all of you. So today I've finally got the time and I'd like to continue to discuss the Dharma with you. So before we talk about the six realms of reincarnation and we discuss each realm in detail. And today I feel like talking about why, what exactly caused reincarnation. So some other religion may also talk about reincarnation, but they may not give the detail like exactly what caused reincarnation. In Buddhism, the Buddha explained clearly the cause of samsara, the cause of reincarnation. So that is the 12 links of dependent origination. Dependent origination or dependent arising is an extremely important concept in Buddhism. So it's not just a concept, but it's really uh, the truth. It's really like that. Uh, in Buddhism, we don't say that there is an absolute creator that creates everything and that's it. Uh, instead, the Buddha explains that everything in our lives happens right, because of something else. Right? Because this exists, so that exists. Right? It's dependent on something else. So nothing really exists independently. I do not exist independently. I'm here also because of my parents, right? all these causes and conditions. So dependent origination is an extremely important concept in Buddhism and the 12 links of dependent origination explains the cause of samsara. So remember the wheel of life that we discussed before. So I've got the famous painting, uh, the wheel of life. Uh, you may not be able to see this clearly but I'll just I briefly explain because we also discussed this before. So in the center, uh, we have the three animals, uh, the pig, the bird, and the snake, which represents the three poisons that all of us have, uh, which is ignorance, greed, and anger. Uh, ignorance is actually the cause of samsara. Uh, greed and anger also belongs to ignorance. And then we have uh, this circle is by the karma, if you do good deeds, then you go up, you ascend right, in the cycle of rebirth. Right? If you do bad deeds, then you fall in the cycle of rebirth. And this big circle represents the six realms of reincarnation, right, which we discussed before. Right? The heaven, the human, the assurers, the animal, the hungry ghost, and the hell realm. And the outside circle, I see this, right? all this uh, outside circle uh, represents what we're going to discuss today, uh, the 12 links of dependent origination. Uh, the outside circle explains clearly how samsara works, why reincarnation happens. So today we're going to look at the 12 links of dependent origination. So the first link is ignorance. Uh, what caused reincarnation? I uh, due to a sort of ignorance. Uh, ignorant of what? Uh, ignorant of, for instance, the Four Noble Truths. Uh, one doesn't understand that there is sufferings in life. Uh, the cause of suffering uh, stands for our craving and there is uh, the cessation of suffering and the path that leads to the end of suffering. So ignorance of the Four Noble Truths, ignorance of the Law of Karma, the law of cause and effect. Ignorance of mistakenly perceiving the five skandhas as the self. So the five skandhas are the form, uh, this physical body, the feelings, the perceptions, the mental activities and the consciousness to discern. So a lot of people identify this five skandhas as the self, but this is actually not the true self. Why they're not the true self? Because they're all impermanent, constantly changing. We talked about before, what's real in Buddhism has to be unchanged throughout time. I will discuss what's the true mind, 
and the delusional mind before. So because of this ignorance, hence it creates the samsara, the six realms of reincarnation. So the ignorance that we discuss here is actually the more heavy ignorance which caused samsara. There is also the more subtle ignorance even the arahants have, even the bodhisattvas have, which prevent them from realizing the perfect Buddhahood. So only when one ends fundamental ignorance, one can realize Buddhahood. So fundamental ignorance, also called beginningless ignorance, is the very first thought of ignorance. And through the fundamental ignorance, that gives rise to more heavy ignorance, and which caused the samsara. So arahants ends the heavy ignorance. The arahants ends all the afflictions of wrong views and perceptions, but they still have the afflictions of dust. They still have the affliction of ignorance. Even bodhisattvas still have the most subtle ignorance, which prevent them from realizing the perfect Buddhahood. So the ignorance here we discuss is the more heavy ignorance in the samsara, also known as the ignorance of the branches. But this is also stemmed from the fundamental ignorance, the beginningless ignorance, the very first thought of ignorance. And when one eliminates the fundamental ignorance, one can realize Buddhahood. When one eliminates the heavy ignorance, one can end the cycle of reincarnation. So ignorance in the painting of the Wheel of Life is usually represented by a blind man looking for his way with his crane. So we are like this blind person because of ignorance. Because there is ignorance, so there is the second component in the 12 links of dependent origination that is karmic formation or mental formation. So what does that mean? Like what's karma we discussed before? Like karma stands for our thoughts. Like karma is our intention, our thoughts that act through the mind, body and speech. We don't just have one thought, right? We don't just have one intention, but really a series of thoughts, a series of intention that acts through the body, speech, or mind, right? With series of speech, series of actions, right? So it's the karmic formation, right? Because of our karma that formed from our past lives, right? This karmic formation also determines our next rebirth. So that's why we are being born with all kinds of situations right, in all kinds of families. This also depends on our karma from our past lives. So all the karma formations from our past lives determine our rebirth in this life. Right? It can even affect our future lives. So this is usually represented by a potter making a vase on a wheel. So the pots the potter makes symbolize the actions of body, speech, and mind by which the potter moves his karma in the wheel of life. So this is actually a very good metaphor right? because you think about the wheel, right? that the potter is making the pots on the wheel. Right? Only a single push, then this wheel can turn automatically right? for those who have made pots before. So it's like our karma imprints right, from our past life really affects our life in this life. That's why it's so difficult sometimes for us to change our habits or to let go of our attachment right, because the karma force is very strong and it doesn't just form in this life. Right, we carry this habit from our past lives right, because of our karma. So, Although sometimes we think we have the choice, sometimes we can't really help right, because the karmic force is very strong, the habitual tendency is very strong. Right, because of our karma, because of our karmic formation, then it gives rise to the third component in the 12 links of dependent origination, that is the consciousness. 
Because of our karmic formation, so the consciousness will come to reincarnate. And the consciousness here we're talking about uh, is the layer consciousness, the uh, storehouse consciousness, uh, the eighth consciousness we discussed. Uh, that stores all our karma formation, all the karma, the karma imprints for our past lives. So this layer consciousness come to reincarnate. So when we reincarnate, it's not just physical body, right? The physical body has already gone. Uh, the consciousness remains. It's the consciousness that comes to reincarnate, right? to enter into the mother's womb. Then slowly it gives rise to the physical body uh, due to all kinds of causes and conditions. So there's a sutra called entry into the womb. In this sutra, the Buddha described uh, how the consciousness enter into the mother's womb. So we don't reincarnate into our mother's womb by chance, but really it's because of our karma with our parents as well. Uh, usually four types of reasons why we reincarnate into a particular family, right? either to pay debt or to collect debt, to pay gratitude or to take revenge. Right? It can be a mix of these reasons as well. So it's because of our karmic connection with our parents, so we chose this family to reincarnate into a certain family. So this consciousness is usually represented uh, by a monkey swinging on the trees in the wheel of life right? because our delusional mind is very strong right? just like a monkey likes to jump from trees to trees and the fourth component in the traveling of dependent origination is called the name and form so what does it mean? so because of consciousness right? the consciousness is linked to your womb and then there is the embryo right? the embryo is the form it doesn't look like a fetus here. It doesn't look like a human's baby uh, with the six roots yet. Uh, so this is the very initial stage. Uh, this is the form. And uh, what is name? Uh, name here refers to uh, the psychic, the mental phenomena, uh, the four scandals. So that's the feelings, perceptions, mental activities, and the consciousness to discern. So although uh, it's only an embryo, it already has all this mental phenomena. So the embryo also think and feels as well. So that's why in Buddhism we do not support abortion. It right? doesn't matter which stage of the pregnancy. Right? Because first of all, the consciousness is already there right? from the formless to the form. So to abort, right? it doesn't matter which stage, it's considered an act of killing. Right? You actually I cute, try to cue the consciousness that has strong karmic connection with you, which chose to enter into your womb. So I, it's better that if one can refrain from abortion. I, in some cases, maybe we cannot afford raising children, etc. What to do? Maybe to give to families that cannot have children. Uh, there are also many families in the world that they want to have children, they cannot have children. So the fourth component is called a name and form. Uh, it actually refers to the five scandals, but because the form here doesn't look like uh, a human's body yet, and also uh, the name, uh, the feelings, perceptions, these are not uh, completely developed, but it ha already has in there. So that's why it's called the name and form. In the wheel of life, it's represented by a person in a boat. So the boat symbolizes the form, and the person symbolizes the psyche, the mental phenomena. And next are the six roots. Right? Because there is the name and form, then slowly, right, during uh, the period of pregnancy, and then they developed the six roots. So before we talk about the name and form, right, the form uh, that did not look like a human's baby yet, maybe two to three weeks into pregnancy, uh, there are no six roots yet. But after 19 weeks, about five months, then we can see all the six roots are formed. Uh, if you go to an ultrasound during pregnancy, you can see the baby's eyes, nose, mouth, ears, 
etc. I all these six sense bases they have been formed, and in the wheel of life, this is usually represented、uh, by an empty house、uh, with an empty door. So this is because the sense bases have been formed but not yet functioning. So this is also at、uh, the pregnancy stage.、Uh, if you read the sutra on entry into the womb,、uh, the Buddha describes this stage in great details.、Uh, not only the physical development but also the mental,、uh, in extremely extremely great detail.、Uh, really incredible.、Uh, this is also one of my favorite sutras, and I highly recommend、uh, all of you to go and read about it、uh, to understand how we actually came、uh, from. Uh, the consciousness and into our mother's womb and into this world, and the fifth component is contact. Right,、uh, this is when the moment that we are being born from our mother's womb, and、uh, that is the first contact we have with the external world, right,、uh, with our six sense bases. And we know that when the baby first came out from the womb. The baby usually, almost all babies in the world, would cry hysterically. Why is that? Because it went through great suffering, like coming out from that tiny little hole, and also a great suffering for him at the delicate skin to come into contact with the external environment. So the Buddha also describes this in the sutra. So in the wheel of life, contact is usually represented. Uh, by an image where a woman touches a man. So once we have contact, then there is the feelings,、uh, the feelings of good, bad, neutral, right? So this is usually represented by an arrow struck into a man's eyes、uh, in the wheel of life.、Uh, this just shows us how much we are controlled by our feelings. In each and every moment, like how much we are being controlled by our likes and dislikes, our preferences, our separation, our attachment to the feelings, in each and every moment, it's really like an arrow struck into our eyes. So, because we have feelings, then it gives rise to craving. Right? If it feels good, then we crave for more. We do not want to separate. I found the object that we like, and we want to be separated from the sensations, the feelings that we dislike. So, I、uh, because these feelings, then it gives rise to craving. And remember, in the Four Noble Truths, I、uh, craving is the root of suffering. And、uh, that's why we suffer so much in our life. Ah,、uh, due to our craving, our attachment. To not to get what we want. So this is usually represented by a man drinking the wine, or a woman offering wine to the man. Good wine, and you crave for more. So, and because of craving, there is grasping. Ah,、uh, you want to obtain more. Ah,、uh, you want to obtain the things that you like. Ah,、uh, whether in relationship, in our everyday life, ah,、uh, we all see that. Like、feelings, craving, and grasping. Ah,、uh, this is very logical. So this is usually represented by a man、uh, plucking fruit from the trees, right?、Uh, because it's so good. So you want to get it. You want to have more. Ah,、uh, because of grasping, then one acts through one's body, speech, and mind, and there is becoming. This is usually represented by a couple making love. Ah,、uh, because. There is becoming, so one is reborn in a particular birthplace when all the necessary conditions are there. So this is represented by a woman giving birth in the wheel of life. So there's the rebirth, because there is birth, there is again the old age and death and all kinds of sufferings in between. So this is represented by a burial with a corpse in the wheel of life. So these are the twelve links of dependent origination, the twelve causal links that clearly explain how reincarnation came into place, what caused reincarnation. So how to eliminate samsara? It's easy. If the ignorance 
is eliminated, then sansara is eliminated uh, because it stems from ignorance. Uh, although it's easy in theory, uh, it's extremely difficult to do in practice. I uh, will talk about before only an arahant can end sansara. So an arahant cut off all the attachment in the cycle of reincarnation. The arahant cut off all the wrong views and perceptions, and hence one can end the cycle of birth and death. It's easier said than done, right? Can we actually let go of all the attachment in the cycle of reincarnation? Like, can we actually just even let go of the attachment to this physical body? Right? It's extremely, extremely difficult, like, almost impossible for maybe almost all the people here in the world. So what to do? The easiest way to exit the cycle of reincarnation is to recite the name of Amitabha Buddha or Amitabha to rely on Amitabha Buddha's great compassionate vows to receive us to his pure land. And there we can realize Buddhahood quickly. And when we arrive in the pure land, we are outside of the cycle of reincarnation. So this is the easiest way. If you were to rely on your self-effort to cut off all your attachment and all the afflictions, uh, it's extremely difficult and uh, near impossible for beings in the Dharma ending age. Uh, actually, the Buddha already said it's not possible for beings in the Dharma ending age. That's why we must rely on Amitabha Buddha's great compassionate vows to first migrate our consciousness to the pure land and there we can realize Buddhahood quickly right? because Amitabha Buddha has the great compassion of us to receive us to the pure land without the need for us to first realize enlightenment. So the pure land path is also the easy path. It's the path that is the most suitable for all the beings in the Dharma ending age. So before we discuss about Prachika Buddha, also known as Alone Buddha, so a Prachika Buddha realized enlightenment by either independently observing the 12 causal links. So maybe when there is no Buddha in the world and he can independently observe the 12 links of dependent origination or when he was born during the time of the Buddha and he heard the Buddha expounding the Dharma about the 12 links of dependent origination and he ended the craving and realized enlightenment. But it's very rare to have uh, this kind of person uh, in our world. Uh, maybe in the past uh, there are uh, Pratika Buddhas. But now given we are in the Dharma ending age, it's extremely difficult and near impossible. So the easy way is actually for us to recite the name of Amitabha Buddha and to migrate to the Pure Land. And there we can realize Buddhahood quickly. And also to exit the cycle of reincarnation doesn't mean that we do not exist anywhere. Buddhism is not nihilism. Sometimes people think, oh, what's the point of exit samsara? Then one doesn't exist anywhere. No, it's not like that. Uh, you will not be reborn in the cycle of reincarnation, uh, which is actually an illusion. The cycle of reincarnation is an illusion. Uh, but you will actually realize your true nature. Uh, your true nature is actually no birth and no death. Uh, we actually have eternal life, no birth and no death. We actually don't need to go through this repeated suffering of birth and death. Our true nature is actually no birth and no death, which is eternal. Why we don't use the word eternal? Because when we say eternal, there could be meaning there is a beginning and then eternal. No, our true nature is actually no birth, no death, no beginning, no end. Our infinite light and life. That is our true nature. That's also the meaning of Amitabha. And someone may also ask, why do we have ignorance in the first place? Uh, because of ignorance, then there is reincarnation. So why do we have ignorance in the first place uh, if our true nature is actually no birth and no death? Okay, so this we'll discuss in the next video.
Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya, Namo Amitofo.